Well, hello everyone, back in more <laughs> modest dress I got out of my out of my Wonder Woman bustier or corset or whatever it was. I figured that was appropriate for the last rant, but here I am. I'm doing so good. I probably shouldn't say that because it's jinxing myself. I promised you guys every Friday some kind of historical content. And last Friday, I did it at like three in the morning because I had to keep my promise. And now I'm rushing off to the Colorado convention, but I said, Wayne, besides close the door, I need to do some content before we go. So you got to give me a bit. All right, let me start with the obligatory whoring, as I like to say. I don't have an OnlyFans though I could be persuaded, uh, I do have a Patreon. So if you enjoy this kind of content, up above here is the linkage. You would make me very, very happy, particularly after the rant earlier today where I joke and I take things lightly, like at least outwardly, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me. These bitches do bother me. And you could make me happy and get even with them at the same time with just... For the, for the low, low cost of as little as a dollar a month. But I would really appreciate it, all half joking aside. Now, I am on my way to the Colorado Convention, so this is not going to be a long episode. As usual, it is audience participation. I love your comments. That's what keeps me going. There were some wonderful comments uh, last time. Really made me smile. I can hear those birds screaming. I hope you can't. All right, so we are only going through the political perspective portion of the May, June, 1973 LP News. But before we get to that, I do have something I need to somewhat rant about. I was going to do a separate episode on it, but I might as well just throw it in here. Star Child brought something to my attention, and I do need to take some personal responsibility here. I am on the APRC, which means that I review content that gets put out by the party, including LP News. And I'm normally really good about catching problematic content. But apparently, I skipped a page. Because in the December 19, uh, I almost said 1973, in the December issue of LP News, apparently an editorial went out that claimed anarchists weren't libertarians. Uh, uh, excuse me? So if you're following the LNC list, you will see that I put up a post saying, um, yeah, a retraction is needed. And there's been some pushback saying it was an op-ed and that's opinion by its nature and you don't do retractions to opinions. And I'm like, but uh, no, I respectfully disagree. Everything that's in LP News, even if it might be an opinion, the opinion should be of things that are of actual dispute in the party, not claiming certain people's beliefs are not libertarian beliefs. And I said, what if we accidentally let slide that people that were allies of trans people weren't actual libertarians? Would we be so blase about that? Or would we post a retraction? Do, do, do. I think we would post a retraction. So I don't know what we're going to do about it. I am partially responsible for not catching it. But now I'm going to be part of the solution. I offered to write uh, another op-ed piece in uh, rebuttal, I guess. But I think something official needs to be put out by the party. Apologizing for that. Imagine if it was any other group. I guess it's just okay to shit on anarchists. Anyway, let's now to the political perspective of the, the June, no, May, June 73 LP News. And you'll see, I've got some fancy. Check this out. Next, I've got, look, a camera up so that you could see more of my studio, but you could also see the mess over there. Sorry, ignore that. That mess over there is, ac I'm in the basement. That is the door to the furnace room. Um, I need to close it for one thing. Wayne, close the furnace door. No, but I need to paint it as well. And I'm going to put some Liberty stuff up there. I got some decor. Um, you see the nice banner that was given to me by the kind folks in Wisconsin. You also see my um, 
my Liberty Rooster <laughs> and Lady Liberty. So I've got all kinds of stuff here. I'm going to be putting up another camera over there, but ain't that fancy? Let's get started with the political perspective, which is up on the screen. All right. It is chapter 11, the new conservatism. I haven't read this at all, so this is going to be new to me. And these, you know, I'm going to do some female bitching here for a minute. I'm wearing, you know, obviously I wear my false eyelashes and they're a bit too long. So when I have my glasses on, they're kind of like pushing up against the lenses. I know first world female problems, but so I need to like put my glasses out a little bit like this so that my, my eyelashes, I dropped my paper. All right, continuing. I need some dew. Alrighty. There is a great deal of Ballyhoo. That's not a word you hear often. Hey, uh, David Davis. Um, uh, he asked, I'm going to add this. I'm sorry. You guys never know who I'm reacting to. Have I? Add? No, I haven't actually. This has all always been here. Oh, the banner. He says, I was talking about the banner. Yes, this banner was given to me. Isn't this cool? By the people at the Libertarian Party of Wisconsin had this made for me. And I just think it is so cool. So yeah, I'll be using this quite a bit. Um, but uh, as well as some other things. But yes, I did add that to the studio. Thank you for noticing. I was like so thrilled to get that gift. It was like it tickled me pink it, pinker. It tickled me pinker. Okay. All righty. There is a great deal of ballyhoo these days about the renaissance of a conservatism or the squaring of America. God, these eyelashes are bothering the hell out of me. A growing public rejection of liberalism and an accompanying return to traditional values. Okay. Indeed, it is becoming almost in to be a conservative. Intellectuals from Herman Kahn to Daniel Moynihan, Irving Kristol to Norman Podhoretz are suddenly proclaiming their disillusionment with the left and their newfound admiration or at least respect for the middle slash right. In the past few months, there have been major newspaper articles in the LA Times and Denver Post and in other papers which pick up material from the Post Times Syndicate on the new intellectual respectability of conservatism. U.S. News and Intellectual Digest have carried interviews with Herman Kahn on this subject. And the National Observer devoted the front page of its March 10th issue to this topic. Might be interesting to see those articles, wouldn't it? Because these things are so cyclical. Can't you see this coming around again where it's now almost the counterculture to be conservative? I'm not advocating for any of that, but I'm just saying it used to be, you know, now with wokeism being the new orthodoxy, it's almost now, you know, revolutionary and, you know, rebellious to be not woke, I guess. So apparently the counter-revolution is here. Americans are finally reacting to the excesses of New Deal liberal philosophy, which reached, we hope, its logical conclusion in the McGovern campaign. Your hope, David, was misplaced because there are no breaks on this thing. There is no conclusion to New Deal insanity. The question is, how does this affect us? Is this a development to be hailed or damned? I lost my spot. Oh, here we go. What should we be doing as a result of the emergence of the new conservatism? In order to answer these questions, we must first determine precisely what is this new conservatism and how does it differ from the old conservatism? In other words, welcome to the new boss. Same as the old boss. <laughs> The answer to this latter question depends largely on how one defines old and new. For our purposes, however, it seems to this writer that we can define the old conservatism as the isolationist slash abolitionist ideology espoused by people like Albert J. Nock, who was a libertarian, by the way, and Frank Chodorov, the people who opposed Roosevelt's 
domestic statism, and foreign adventurism with equal vigor. This old conservatism, maybe Nock, maybe I'm confused. I thought Albert J. Nock was a libertarian. Didn't he write Our Enemy, the State? Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, this old conservatism gradually fell from favor during World War II and the Cold War era that followed. By 1960, it had been almost entirely superseded by Buckley-style conservatism, a potpourri of anti-communist interventionist bromides. That's another word you don't hear enough in the foreign policy area and pro-economic freedom stands mixed with anti-civil liberty stands on domestic issues. Okay, I got confused. So he is associating knock with none of that. Okay, got it. This new conservatism carried within it a terrible contradiction, namely the conflict between the theoretical devotion to freedom, at least in the economic sphere, and the gut anti-communism. Unfortunately, so in other words, I'm reading between the lines, what he's saying is almost there was a kind of woke anti-communism to the new conservatism. They hated communism more than they loved freedom. Unfortunately, the latter almost always triumphed and thus the new conservative 10 to 15 years ago almost always wound up on the side of the big budget anti-free speech forces in any debate. Not all conservatives succumbed to this new orthodoxy. A fair number resisted the notion that in order to defeat them, we needed to become like them. Among those who stuck fairly close to the old line are Willa Stone, Vivian Clems, and to a somewhat lesser extent, Robert Welch. Large remnants of the old right philosophy can still be found in a diluted and impure form in the Birch Society sector of the American right. The early party was not embarrassed by or entirely opposed to the Birch Society, which the woke libertarians of today will be at pains to, to disavow. Some leaders in this sector have gone so far as to state that communism is largely a hoax set up to scare Americans into accepting socialistic or fascistic rule at home. Despite the efforts of the old conservatives, however, the new conservatism gradually became the dominant force on the right in America. And thus, when young people of libertarian inclinations were seeking a political home in the early 1960s, it was to the new conservatives that they were first attracted, most notably Young Americans for Freedom, YAF, and its allied organizations. I'm curious, fam, where would you put the conservatism of today in this thing? I don't even know what you would call conservatism today. It's like, is it even conservative? I don't, is there, are, are there even any real concern? I'm not talking about individual people. I'm talking about as a political movement. Is there really any true conservative movement today? And to that extent, is there any true liberal movement today? Unless that's us. If we're talking about classical liberalism, that would be us, I would suppose. I'd be very interested in hearing your thoughts. This alliance was tenable at that time. There was a common enemy, Kennedy, at home, and domestic issues were dominant. Libertarians and Buckley conservatives could work together in harmony, opposing Medicare, AID, I'm not sure what that is, and so forth. Since then, libertarianism and conservatism have been diverging, yes ma'am, ever more widely and ever more rapidly. The Vietnam War brought out the rapid, I mean, not rapid, rabid interventionist streak in the Buckleyites and helped drive wedges between them and both libertarians and old conservatives. And it's interesting that, that no one is talking about the rapidly rabid divide between conservatism and libertarianism then, yet we are still in the general public lumped together. We are not conservatives. 
Okay, continuing. And the shift in domestic issues from economic to social. Oh, Lord, we've got that problem, don't we? E.g. drugs, the hip lifestyle, and sex-related questions like censorship and abortion has put libertarians increasingly on the opposite side of public debates from conservatives of all stripes. Today, the new conservatives have finally begun to win public acceptance for themselves, but for precisely the wrong reasons from our viewpoint. They're winning support, not for their economic views with which we largely agree, but for their social stands. What's even worse, they seem to be willing to abandon or largely soft pedal their economic views in order to get supports for their social stands. Until somewhat recently, I think that had remained the conservatism up through maybe the Trump era. I, the social, both sides became much more about social views than about their economic views. And let me put this up here. I think you're correct, David. AID was uh, Agency for International Development. That sounds right. I was just curious. Nowadays, you wouldn't see that abbreviation just because of the association like with AIDS and people would freak out. So that's obviously an older acronym, but I think you're correct on that. In sum... The new conservatism that is gaining acceptance seems to be a sort of, oh, I love this term, crew-cut New Deal liberalism. That is like the mental picture that gives with me. David Nolan really could paint a word picture, that's for sure. Welfare is okay as long as everyone dresses neatly, goes to church, eschews marijuana, and respects their elders. Ain't that... That is the conservatism that was in vogue when I was a registered Republican. Now, for those of you who don't know, because I could just hear the I never really was a real Republican. I was a rhino, if even that, because I was so apolitical. I don't know if you could really call me anything, but my family, I grew up as a Democrat. My family was very Democrat. Um... But when I became a Christian at the age of 29, I was converted to a very fundamentalistic sect in which at the time you accepted Christ, you also accepted the Republican Party. That's just how it was. Everyone in my church was a Republican. I changed my voter registration, but I still never really cared about politics except for abortion. But that was it. So... I don't know if I ever even really was like a Republican in philosophy, but I was a, a registered Republican for about 20 years. But I hardly ever voted. Like, it, it just wasn't a thing for me. Politics wasn't really much of a thing. And the abortion issue really wasn't even a political thing for me. It was more of a moral uh, church thing. All right, continuing. Accepting the welfare state as a given in the hopes of salvaging their social prejudices. And that's true today. You will never hear conservatives today say, get rid of Social Security. That's a sacred elephant. They, they've completely sold their principles. Needless to say, this is not a good development from our viewpoint. It means that a lot of things are not likely to get better under a conservative administration, if we ever get one and that it will now be harder to recruit conservatives to our ranks since they may now get what they want without our cooperation. Looking on the bright side, however, this development will make it easier for us to achieve recognition as a force distinct from conservatism. Wish we got that. It will also make it easier for us to reach disgruntled liberals, those who recognize the failure of liberalism but can't stomach the new conservatism. What should our strategy and tactics be? In this writer's opinion, the rise of the new conservatism dictates that we change our strategy from one that is essentially, let's go to the next page, Um, right-oriented to one of concentrating on the middle, the left, 
and the uncommitted. We aren't going to be able to out Buckley Buckley or out Agnew Agnew, so we might as well not try. As far as tactics are concerned, it would seem that our best approach is to emphasize our consistency, our advocacy of freedom in all spheres. That. That's all I can say. That. One thing I liked about Nolan and didn't like at the same time. What I like is what we don't have today. He was so dispassionate when he was just looking at the landscape. Like, what is the right doing? What is the left doing? How should we capitalize on this? I like how he was so dispassionate about it. Didn't get all butthurt or freaked out. But I also don't like, and then what I didn't like was that he concentrated so much on what should our tactics be in light of those things. I don't think we should even worry about those things. I think all we should do is what he said right here, our advocacy of freedom in all spheres. Now, I liked his dispassionate analysis because we do not have that today. Today, we have libertarians who still carry some kind of torch for either conservatism, for the left or the right. That's why you have people calling themselves left and right libertarians. I think that's both bullshit. I don't want to do any of that. And so on one side, you got these who are, and it's mostly for some reason on the Prague side now. Funny, the Prags in 2008 used to be right libertarians. Isn't that funny? The Prags of the Portland Massacre era were Alicia Matson, Aaron Starr, the very, who some people call Republican light, which they aren't. They are both libertarians, but I'm just saying. But the Prags of today are like Adam Bates and Andy Craig, as far from conservatism as you can get. Isn't that funny? But they... Um, but the Prags of today are so concerned with not being associated at all with anything right or conservative. When I don't think they should be worried about that. It, it's Anyway, I just think that's funny the way that shifted. It, but the funny, funny thing is, though I'm going to continue, is I don't get how these new moderates prags whatever like they're so concerned with not being quote unquote right libertarian but all the retreads they're bring, they're, they're they're promoting for our candidates are all from the republican party you would think they would be like really hot for bringing in tulsi gabbard or something but meanwhile they had bill fucking weld ex-Republican, barely, still with the stench of the Republican Party and went back to, like, like a dog returns to his vomit. And now, who's their guy now? Justin Amash. Now, I like Justin. I'm not saying this to do any, whatever. He's a libertarian. But again, came from the Republican Party. I think they have an identity crisis, these people. You'd think they would be actively recruiting some people who are former Democrats, wouldn't you think? Or Greens, former Greens. Okay, let's face it. This is what makes us unique. And it is basically the only thing we have to offer. Exactly! That is the only thing we have to offer. If someone is interested only in some kinds of freedom and is even opposed to other kinds of freedom, he or she isn't much of a prospect for us. Now, I'm seeing some lag on my end. I hope my internet's not lagging. I hope it's not lagging for you. And comments, let me know. It's really lagging here. My video is. Let me try switching my video because maybe it's that other screen. Let me try switching to the main camera. If I can. Give me one second because I am seeing a really weird lag here. Okay, I shut off that camera. Let me do another one. Nope, it's doing that one again. Let me see if I can switch it. Camera switcher. Huh. Why won't it do that one? This is really weird. I'm learning something new about my program. Okay, you guys are going to have to let me know if there's a lag. And I'll have to figure out how to switch cameras on this little 
hoosie who screen here. That is very interesting that it won't let me do what would happen. Hold on. I, I am playing around here a little bit. Yay! I figured it out, but it's still a little laggy, but we'll see. But I'm glad I figured that out. But what I what's interesting here is that he admits that some people just aren't a prospect for us. Today we seem to like have a real hard time accepting that. That there's some people that the soccer moms in Peoria just aren't a prospect for us. Deal with it. For years, liberals and conservatives have been getting elected by saying to people, vote for me. If I'm elected, I'll screw all of those other guys for your benefit. I'll outlaw the things you don't like and take other people's money and spend it on the things you want. Ain't that the truth? And for years, people have been buying this line. At, at last, however, they're, begun, they're beginning... What, where? They've begun to catch on that a lot of the time they are the ones getting shafted. That left minus right does indeed equal zero. Ooh, that's a great line, isn't it? Our only hope is to appeal to people on a completely different basis. To say, look, if you elect us, we won't screw anybody for your benefit, but we won't screw you for anyone else's benefit either. All we have to offer is freedom. All we can hope for is that people have reached the point where they would rather gain freedom for themselves than take more freedom away from others in all areas, civil and economic. If we have reached that point, then libertarianism is indeed an idea whose time has come, an idea which cannot be stopped. If, on the other hand, the bulk of humanity would rather oppress others than free itself, there is nothing we can do. That is a very sobering thought, don't you think? I think that is. And I really wish you guys would let me know in chat if, if I'm laggy on your end because it is so laggy here. But, right, there's nothing we can do if people care more about taking freedom away from others that would rather risk that. There's just nothing we can do. This reminds me, its real, that's a really sobering thought. It reminds me of something I had said before that bothers me about the current state of politics. It's not that other people don't want to be free. Because I do think most people today don't really want to be free. And that's okay. Because if we believe in self-ownership, you can choose to be a slave. I don't mean that in the literal sense. But you can choose to give up some of your freedom for security. But the problem today isn't that others hate freedom or don't want freedom. It's that they not only don't want to be free, they don't want you to be free either. That is indeed the problem. So I'm now getting ready to go to the Colorado Convention. I am so distracted by how laggy the video is here on my end. I guess I'll find out whether it was laggy on yours. So I have to be going. I am going to be doing a lot of vlogging at the Colorado Convention. I figured since it's my convention, I could give a lot of inside baseball. And I hope you guys enjoy that. I got this cool little like iPhone video rig and let's see how it goes. Unless I just get too all up in my feels and just too distracted because I've been miserable in the state party now for two years since 2019 and we didn't really have elections in 2020. So this convention is going to determine whether I basically am not involved in the state party for another year. Thank you, Michael, for letting me know it's laggy. I have no idea why. Um, my internet connection is probably a little bad. I apologize. Nothing I can do. But good night, everyone. And I'll be seeing you soon. Love you much. You gotta take what you're given. That's how we live it. Don't be mad at the system. It's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians and choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a business. Not because they